Scotland over Fiji, 28 points to 12, comfortable enough win without being totally outstanding. The Fijians, I think, uh, certainly had their moments in the game where they pushed forward, but uh, yeah, couldn't get across the line more than the two times they did. But anyway, I'll go through some key events and stats. You guys can let us know your thoughts. I'm watching this one really delayed because it was on at like 2 in the morning uh, over here at NZ, so... um. Yeah, much delayed, but uh, was still a good game to watch. Uh, pretty good crowd at Murrayfield, which was pleasing to see. And um, Scotland were keen to give them some entertainment, eh? Some pretty quick uh, quick play early, and they got the Fijian lock. Uh, the eventual try score, Rotui Solia, yellow carded within a minute. Because uh, when Scotland wanted to go quick, Ali Price with a tap and go, and uh, he doesn't get back the 10. Can't help himself, but tackling the halfback, kind of who can blame him, but yeah, in the bin early, so not the way uh, Fiji would have liked to start this game, and it's only a few minutes later, Scotland punish with the extra man, it's a maul try, and uh, Turner goes over, it's on 7 minutes, so 7-0 um, Scotland, it's, um, it's looking like kind of the perfect start for the Scots, basically, that being said, uh, Redpath goes uh, and gets pinged for being offside. Fiji opt for a pretty straightforward three during the yellow card, but it's a missed kick, and they don't really have a specialist goal kicker in their starting 15 that I know of. And uh, that kind of showed, but at least it killed a little bit of time with the yellow card. And um, rather than uh, going for threes, they decide from then on, just go for tries. And uh, Tui Thuva gets one, man. It's a great finish in the corner. One of the great tries you will see in terms of a winger just having the skill to not put any of any part of his body over the touchline. Um, the forwards are the ones who create it, and the backs are the ones who finish it. That's the way it should be. And uh, missed conversion, but seven points to five Fiji. I think we're just back to 15 on 15 by that point anyway. Uh, maybe for a couple of minutes. So, yeah, did well to hit back. And they, they really do get a decent period where they are actually on top like the score line might not suggest it but they took the lead on 23 minutes when uh the aforementioned Rotui Solia uh who had been yellow carded he manages to to barge over from pretty close range like the first try was kind of a stereotypical Fiji M1 the second one was more just pure grunt but some big carries by Fiji in the build-up man they were just really good at getting over the advantage line um, they go in front 12 points to 7. Scotland had been warned for the amount of penalties they were conceding. And um, Hoggy even gets yellow carded despite the fact that Fiji went over for the try. So 12-7, Scotland down a man for the next 10 minutes. You would be forgiven for thinking, man, Fiji. Fiji might do this here, but despite all Fiji's pressure, they just couldn't convert. Final pass lacking. One of them uh, pass ended up going into touch. Yellow card ends up Ending with no points conceded for, for Scotland. So credit to their defence for um, for basically just uh, being able to shut the the Fijian attack down, which is easier said than done. And um, speaking of shutting the attacks down, it's, love, it's lovely when you see, because uh, Duavata move is quick. You see one of the Fijian loose forwards, I think it was Tui Sui, like tackled him when he was almost at full tilt. So um, yeah, good defence all around from both sides. Uh, 38 minutes. Scotland do actually manage to go in front in this game uh, for the second time. It's their first time in the Fijian 22 for quite some time. They get a scrum, and uh, it's a pretty simple one, but very effective with um, Price having a wee snipe off the back of the scrum, and uh, Hastings just beating Revolvo 1v1, and uh, with the conversion, 12 points for Fiji, 14 points for Scotland with the break. So... Pretty tight stuff, but Fiji, obviously, you can tell from the board, aren't going to get any more points in this one. Uh, the position and territory, sorry, the position's been pretty tight uh, with Fiji just edging it. Seven penalties conceded uh, by Scotland to Fiji's five, but that's going to change in the second half. Uh, tackles 99 to 44, so Scotland having to do a lot of defending in that first half. Fiji all the running 317, uh, run meters to 159. Second half. Hastings get absolutely smashed by who? This fellow again, Rotua Solia on his debut. He absolutely wallops Adam Hastings. It is a legit fair tackle. Like they looked at it just because Adam Hastings stayed down, but it, 
never even looked dodgy. It was just a massive human tackling another guy who um, wasn't quite ready for it, I guess, wasn't really braced for it. So Kinghorn has to come on because Hastings is done. That, that, that hit took it out of him, winded him, if nothing else. Um, Botita went, um, Botia, not Botita, Botia went close on the, uh, the right wing, but there was a forward pass, so another bit of Fijian kind of pressure not being able to get converted into points. And then um, Scotland, on the other hand, when they go down the other end, their best period of play. Some really nice passing from King Horn when he's come on, getting the ball wide. And then uh, Harris is able to set up Big Duham with a wide pass. They finish it off, so 21 points to 12. 21-12 is starting to look like this might be a bit much, seeing as the Fijians have been able to finish their opportunities. Um, Scotland did hold back another Fijian counter. Dempsey comes on, wins a turnover penalty pretty much straight away. Darcy Graham's having me all confused because of the first half of the game he's wearing headgear and then for some reason he takes it off halfway through. I was wondering who the hell's that guy? It looks like Darcy Graham. It's still Darcy Graham, uh, just not in headgear. But um, I mean, credit to the Fijians. Like one area you expect a team like Scotland to maybe dominate a Fiji as an area like the Mall, but Fijians' Mall defense was cracking. But uh, they still got in trouble with the law when uh, Habosi got his. Um, his hit on, jeez, uh, who did he hit? Was it Ashman? Oh uh, no, Sutherland. It was Sutherland. Swinging arm pretty much to the head, but Sutherland was only just off the ground. So um, they mitigated it down from red to a yellow. Uh, yeah, basically saying the ball carrier was really low. So um, yeah, Fiji go back down to 14. Scotland get the pressure on. Fiji are getting yellow card warnings. If you give away another penalty, it's going to be a yellow card. Then they give away a penalty at the scrum. Well, that doesn't count because it was a scrum penalty. But now you're on warnings for scrums as well. Habossi end up coming back on with no penalties uh, or points conceded. But then uh, one of their props gets yellow carded. Basically, as soon as Habossi comes back on. So, Scotland back to the man advantage. And they get their... Well, they get the red path one first can. Because there's a Dempsey knock on at the back of the scrum. But from another scrum, uh, Ben White goes over. So, I mean, it's he goes through pretty much untouched, doesn't he? So, it was coming. It had to come. And it did. So, 28-12. Um, yeah, then the game just kind of peters out. I mean, Darcy Graham, he gets mad at the match. Ends up getting yellow carded right at the death for coming in at the side. Bit of a cynical one. But... Yeah, I do feel like the Fijians, if they'd scored just like one more try, then this game would have been a bit more tense towards the end. But just, yeah, they, they couldn't convert some of their earlier chances, sadly for them. But as I said, got to give credit to the Scottish defence. Uh, run meters finished 300 to 434 with the Fijians edging that. The Scots edged the possession 52%, but the P Fijians edged the territory 57%. Clean breaks is 6-5 to five to Scotland, so pretty tight. Defenders beating 25-10 to Scotland, so pretty impressive. This makes the Fijians' tackling percentage a bit lower at 82%. The Scots are at 94, which against Fiji is no mean feat, man. I mean, sometimes they're not missing tackles, though. The Fijians are getting over the advantage line, so it's one of those ones where you've got to take the stats and look at them cautiously. Like, a tackle can still be completed, but you can still surrender 3 or 4 metres. Um, but yeah, 155 tackles to 114. Scotland had to do a lot of defending. Turnovers conceded 12 to Fiji, 9 by Scotland. Penalties conceded 18 by Fiji, 11 by Scotland. So that kind of stuff uh, is obviously going to cost you as well. Darcy Graham, 83 metres, 3 clean breaks, 5 defenders beaten. Not bad. Thinks he makes like 6 tackles as well. Matt Faguson makes 23 out of 24. Huge shift. Uh, Habossi, that man who gets the yellow card, still makes 64 metres, 2 clean breaks, 3 defenders beaten. Uh, Matsavesi, the hooker, 16 from 18 tackles from him. So, um, yeah, I don't think either side's going to be that happy with the result. I mean, sure, four tries, home win for the Scots is fine without being spectacular. And for the Fijians, like I said, one more score at least for all the um, attacking value they added, but not quite able to finish would have been a bit nicer. But anyway, that's it. Fiji have got Ireland away next, which is going to be tough. And uh, the Scots, speaking of tough, maybe, uh, will face my... All black side, so we will see how they go. You guys let us know your thoughts. Like I mentioned, it's a bit delayed, but even more delayed. I'm off to watch the Samoans take on the Italians now. You guys take care, and uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.